Have you ever wondered how some people stay ahead of the game? They just seem to be a couple of steps ahead of what's going on. Well, I think maybe, just maybe, they stay on top of developing trends in the world. The insights, the ideas, the inventions, the innovations. To make sure that you stay on top of these things so you can take advantage of some of these developments, here are five innovations that I think will only get bigger this year. Okay, here goes. In no particular order, but starting with number five, robots everywhere. From logistics to manufacturing to cool katana demonstrations, we are surrounded by robots. Not necessarily in human form like in the films, but robots are increasingly taking over tedious tasks with much more precision and ease than we could ever do. I mean, who needs muscles anyway? In fact, robots have been around for years. I remember in the 90s, I worked in this factory. We had this welding welding robot. You could set to do these tasks and it would just weld with a lot more accuracy and speed than anybody there could ever do. And now so many years later, they've only gotten smarter and smarter. I mean, will you just look at these collaborative AMRs or autonomous mobile robots by Turkish startup Oboto or Botobo, Botobo. They have two different names on the website. It's very confusing. These things can move around stuff in a warehouse with extreme efficiency and accuracy without even changing the layout of the space. It's a bit like a Roomba, but just bigger. At number four, we'll see more and more electric vehicles or EVs. And I'm not just talking about Tesla. I'm talking about all kinds of models, big, small, fast, ugly. Speaking of fast, I looked up the fastest EV in the world and apparently it's the Croatian Rimac Nevera. It has set a top speed record of 412 kilometers an hour, 258 miles per hour, making it the fastest electric production car in the world. 412 kilometers an hour in an electric car. Can you imagine that? And it doesn't even make any sound, so you don't even hear it coming. It's like a this bullet. I wonder why they called the uh, Nevera though. It's probably like never ah, uh, because the engineers took it for a spin, came out and said never again. And at a cool two and a half million US dollars, this bad boy could be yours. But for those with a smaller budget, there's choices galore, like this gorgeous Nissan Leaf, the Mini Ace Band. By the way, there's all cars coming out in 2023. The Toyota Prius, the Hyundai Ioniq 6, the Kia EV9, the Tesla Cybertruck, or the Rolls-Royce Spectre. Yeah. Sounds very affordable. Note that the EU is set to selling only electric vehicles after 2035. So we'll be seeing a lot more of these in the next years. Not without challenges, of course, an uncertain electricity supply, not enough charging stations and an uncertain electric grid are just some of the challenges facing the electric vehicle market. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, I would really appreciate if you left us a like, leave us a comment below. If you want to see more videos to stay ahead of the game, hit that subscribe button. Three. Moving swiftly on to number three, ChatGPT3. Knowing you, you've already heard of this term, but what is it exactly? ChatGPT3 is a language generation model developed by OpenAI, which is an American artificial intelligence lab. And it can rapidly generate human-like text for things like uh, translations, summarization, or even kind of conversations for, say, your chatbot on your website. Let me give an example. So I've just opened up OpenAI, and let's say I write something like, write a paragraph on why penguins are cute in the style of Bob Dylan. Just hit enter over here and let's see what comes out. And just within a couple of seconds, it spits out something like this. So let me give this a go in my best <clears throat> Bob Dylan voice. Oh, the penguins, they waddle with grace, black and white and full of charm. Their little tuxedos, they bring a smile to your face. They slide and slip through the farm. Sorry, Bob, if you're watching this, I apologize. This is GPT-3. Now imagine what version number nine can do or number 109 can do. And no, I don't think it will be replacing any meaningful creative work soon. I think it will just shake out kind of the, the mediocrity. I just see them as tools which we can use to make maybe certain tasks a bit easier. Speaking of replacing, imagine that you could, um, you could edit your genes to make certain things that you don't like go away. Way. Just, just, just poof, disappear. Well, that is what our number two can do for you. Crisper. Oh, I like crisps. No, not a bag of crisps. Crisper, you moron. Crisper. Crisper. Or clustered regularly into space, short palindromic repeats. F me say that 10 times. Is a technology that allows scientists to make specific changes to your DNA. It works like a pair of molecular scissors that can cut and edit specific parts of the genetic code. When a virus attacks, the bacteria can memorize the virus's DNA and kind of and store it, file it somewhere. A bit like a most wanted list. So if the same virus then attacks again, CRISPR then pulls up this, this, this file, this mugshot, and copies it. And the copy then acts as an assassin. It hunts down the virus, cuts its DNA, and destroys it. So basically, you can spot and find the bad stuff and then edit it. Or replace it. This technology can be used for a wide range of applications from the medical field to the biotechnical field to agriculture. By the way, CRISPR isn't new. The first hint of its existence came as early as 1987. That's before I was born. 
But more recently, CRISPR is being used to detect and defend against various cancers. Having lost a parent to a devastating cancer, I can tell you I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes and how it can help as many people as possible. And finally, number one, drum roll. AR and VR tech. They both create immersive experiences, but augmented reality enhances the real world with digital information. So think Minority Report with Tom Cruise. Whereas virtual reality creates a completely digital world which users can then interact with. Like in Zuck's metaverse. Okay, okay, before you start throwing cabbages at the screen, screaming, the metaverse sucks. Hear me out. Look, I've heard it may not be the best experience for gamers yet yeah, maybe that changes. Did you also know that almost a quarter of organizations in the world use AR and VR technology to train their people, to skill them up? And I think this year this number will only go up as more companies will get access to it, but also will see the benefits of what it can do, particularly when people are scattered all over the world. For example, Rumi right here in the Netherlands uses virtual reality to stage homes for buyers, saving the brokerage firms thousands of dollars in valuable listing time to streamline the house hunting process, which can be bit of a ball ache. Also, Apple is working on their own AR and VR goggles and the applications that come with that, mainly focusing on streaming video, gaming, and video conferencing. I think the first version of that we're gonna be seeing this year, and let's hope that it's affordable. I am very excited to see where this goes, how this develops, and how it can help us with things like creativity, uh, video production, and other design. Hey, yes, I can hear you shout in the background. Oh, come on, Yuri, when will we stop this nonsense? Aren't we glued to our devices enough by now? Yeah, I agree with you, but maybe these technologies can help make certain things a bit easier for us. So we have more time to go outside in nature and just breathe in the fresh air, smell the roses, and relax. Let that imagination go. Who knows? You might be on to the next big innovation. And once you've gone for a walk, you wanna find out how to take that imagination into something that's tangible, into like an idea that you can go and test and go check out this video where I talk about just that. Thank you for watching.